Hey, my creative friends. It's Shannon from Shannon Studio, and we are going to talk creativity. But this week, we're going to um, stay focused on the topic, because this is the biggest topic. But before we start into it, I don't think I told you, we have started into the dark season in Sweden. Um, it is dusk at 3.30. So I walk Joseph home, we walk home, and um, at 3.30, we're walking home, and 4 o'clock, it's dark. It's like dark, dark. <laughs> and people, you know, talked about it, and it's not even really full-blown into the dark season yet, um, because the mornings are going to be a little bit shortened, too, where it's where you get up in the dark, it's still a little light. I think they, a lot of people say that it's still, it, it will be dark at like eight o'clock in the morning and it doesn't start to get light until nine-ish. So we haven't gotten to that point yet, but we definitely have gotten point to, this, to the point where the sunrise, the sunset is at 3.30ish, um, dark by four, which is really weird. I don't, I, I'm up in the middle of the night a lot of times, so the dark doesn't necessarily bother me except for when I think about we're walking home from school in the dark then then it's just kind of is a mind trip um so we are still you know little transitions here learning more about Sweden and um there's so much there's so many fun things to do I had to I had to step out I had to skip out on one of the things that a gal and I usually do on Tuesdays night so I missed it but anyways um lots of things to do in Sweden so our tip, I mean, our we're talking this week about creativity. We're talking about organizing. Hi, Carrie. Um, we're talking about organizing because, um, uh, you know, I focus on women, women with family, and one of the biggest things we have a hard time with is finding time to be creative. So this week we're going to talk about ways to... Um, it's kind of streamline our our homes and how we do things and maybe um, get you thinking about what you can do differently so so that maybe starts you to go okay I need to you know you're thinking oh I should be doing this or I wanted to do this I really need to do it because I want to have a creative lifestyle and I know that these things are hindering me and they could help me um, hope it's going well for you Carrie um, so we're just going to go through some tips and some, some general thoughts and then some little specific things, um, just to, you know, just to, to the, today's topic is on organizing, just to give us some different, um, things to think about. So to me, one of the biggest things about organizing is to organize the way you really live. So for instance, I love all pictures on Pinterest where everything's labeled and everything's in the same jar or the same box or whatever but then I think I would have to go home and empty out all those boxes into those containers I would have to you know it, it, instead of just going and putting it on the shelf so for me even though I love the way they look it's not reasonable because all it really does is make more work for me and that's work I don't want to do that I could use time I could be using someplace else so the idea is to, to look at organizing in a real world way. Now, if you want to have a pantry that looks beautiful, that, you know, that's great. I, I'm not saying don't do that. I'm just saying be realistic that that does take time in order to have that kind of space. And if you want to spend the time there, fine. But if you want to make more time for uh, making creative projects, and maybe that is your creative project. But, you know, just realize that sometimes we organize thinking it's going to make us more time or or in the reality it doesn't it takes more time another thing is um when you organize i'm just looking at my notes when you organize the biggest the second biggest thing for me is to um i know how to organize i know how to put things away it was teaching my family to put things away it was so interesting to me because you know like things were organized 
Carrie says, I agree. Organizing my sewing wastes so much time. Yes, yes. Um, so my family, I, they would all know where to go to get something because it was labeled. They knew where it was. Everything was in its place. Not the whole house, but the things they're looking for. Um, and so, but they never knew where to put it away. And I'm like, you knew where to go get it. Go put it away. So part of the process for me in organizing wasn't me. It was teaching everybody else how to organize. And we have it, we have eight children, nine children. And so that's a lot of people to organize. And also we moved 12 times in our lifetime. And that didn't even count a couple of moves where they were short term or, you know, like we moved into town out of our house and went to a rental house because we thought we we're going to sell our house, decided not to then move back all within a year's time. So when you have those kinds of m moving, you get to look at your stuff a lot <laughs> and you get to see things. Um, so uh, organize the way you live. And another idea with that is, for instance, if you have a place where things are piled, like the front door, if things are piled and, and people just come in and drop, take a picture of that stuff and then organize that stuff. Not, you know, people will drop tools or people, whatever, when they come home or when they come into this area. Put the tool, put an organization thing for tools right there. So, so a lot of times I, what I would do is watch those decorating shows, which I love too, but they would take a space that's all cluttered and everything else, and then they would design it and everything. But what happened to all the stuff that was there is no longer there. And you know, your family's going to dump it right back there again. So they didn't organize for the stuff the way they lived and the stuff that ended up there naturally. They just decorated to make it nice and lovely for TV. And so I think you have to look at it and whether it's a junk drawer, take a picture of the junk drawer, then look at all those things and say, okay, I need, I need some a space for this and this and this and this, because the stuff is going to end up in that same place again, because that's the natural, that's the natural process of what the way your family lives. If you're, if everybody's dumping their backpacks, um, by the front door, then you've got to put hooks or something or bins or something right next to the front door. If everybody takes their shoes off, have baskets for their shoes. If everybody puts their swim gear, you know, you know, in, in the bathroom on the floor, then you need to find a place. So really look at the way you live, your habits, your family's habits, and organize according to that. Not what I'm doing, just according to that, what you're doing. Um, so also in the thought is use different things or so things that you have, you can use them in different ways. For instance, um, I use cake plates. I love cake plates. I rarely put cake on cake plates, but I like cake plates on my desk because the varying heights lets you use a smaller space, but, um, with more levels and so I can put stuff on top of the cake plate, cake plate and then I can slide stuff closer at the base. So, you know, that's a different, that's taking a tool or taking an object and using it for not its intended purpose. Um, I bought a um, doormat that was cast iron. So it was pretty big and I would, set it on the table or set it on the island because we had big skillets and it was our trivet. Since it was cast iron, we could use it as a trivet. It was really, but it beat having like seven little trivets that end up all over the place. So we just always had it on our table. It looked nice because it had this little ornate pattern. It was nice. And so that's a, a different use for the object what, than what it was. So that's what I was saying. Take, look at what things are and imagine what they could be used for. And um, I, you can go on Pinterest too and see all kinds of different things that they, they take and use for organization. And really, this, or, and this is just to get your thoughts going because uh, organizing is an industry. Um, so you know that, that there's, there's all kinds of things that can happen. Um, Carrie says, my favorite sewing tool organizer was designed for kitchen tools. Yep. There's Carrie's talking about using something that different than what was in its intended use. 
um, I think that that can happen a lot of times if we just spend a little time thinking and looking. Yeah, I agree with that, Carrie. Good job. Um, let's see. Um, tool organization. One of the best things that I've ever done is taken um, tackle, fishing tackle boxes, you know, the kind of opaque that have the little vertical things that come out and you can vary the stages. I mean, the sizes of the little cubbies. I mean, the little little tray things. <laughs> I'm not describing it very well, but tackle box. And it, you can vary the shape, the, the um, width of them. So I have used those for all kinds of things. I've used them for jewelry. I've used it for makeup. I've used it in my craft room for all manner of craft. And um, I've used them for tools. I've used them for all the little bits and pieces. So for instance, like the, the shower rod curtain things that you put on there, or you know, all those things, if, all those little things, and it can be a lot, go in those bins. And every periodically, I would have to buy a new bin and just do it. And then I can sometimes organize them so like one has all the nails and, you know, that sort of thing. That is amazing because then you, when you go to look for something, you just have to pick up the box. You don't have to open it. You do not even have to open it. And so, um, and then it keeps all the clutter. And if, if you're not sure where something is, then it's usually in one of those things. So that's one of the, the really easy um, ones that are, are easy to do to kind of control all those little, little things. Um, also, to organization, um, let's see. Oh, another thing is for families. I don't know about your family. My family will help if there's one step in it. So if they have to, so for instance, I have all these bins in my bathroom and they're labeled. Labels are organization heaven. So all these labels and yet you have to lift the lid in order to put the stuff in. So lifting one step, putting in two step. You can't have more than one step. So I took all the lids off, put them underneath and just, you know, and so the bins were open. We had a better chance, way better chance. I know it's like a small thing, but my people would not do two steps. It's like open bins. I took off doors in our kitchen, um, off the kitchen cabinets in the certain areas because they didn't, they would leave the doors hanging open. And then they wouldn't want to put away the dishes because it required opening the door and then putting in the dishes. So, so, so just, you know, recognizing the way your family really lives. And for my family, two steps were too many. And so I would have to get things down to one step if I wanted any success rate. Um, also, let's see on the list. Um, one of the labels, like I said, um, it's interesting. I, it, whenever I had a new um, calling, a position in church, I would inevitably go in there and organize. We, there's closets that nobody touches for 20, 30 years. There's tools and everything else. And I remember camp and taking those pull out, stacked pull out drawers and labeling them. And, um, and one of my friends went to girls camp and she said, this looks familiar. This looks really familiar. Who did this? And the one gal started laughing and she said, who do you think? And it was, and Margaret, my friends started laughing because she said, oh, Shannon did this. Now this was 10 years later and the organization was still used because it's useful. So once you get systems that really work for you, you can keep them a very long time. And labels are huge. I would label all my boxes and you don't have to make them expensive. I bought like, um, storage boxes and different things and label them. Um, the idea is that you know what things are. And let's see, what else is next? Um, a bag, bags, I'm into bags. You can use um, Ziploc bags, fancy bags, like really nice bags. You can use gift bags. Like I've used gift bags for cookie cutters where they would hang on a, on a hook on the, on the shelves. On the, the hook on a hook on the shelf near the shelf yeah um, so bags a bag for a specific purpose so for instance care let's see Carrie says I think those drawers are the ones we still use 
I would not be surprised, Gary, because <laughs> nobody wants to organize. Really, nobody wants to do it. And for me, it's one of the first things I do whenever I go into um, a calling because it's just like I have to have it organized. And I always end up with a closet that's never been cleaned out for 30 years and, and everything. But once you label them, once you, and I've gone to like every place I've been, I've had to do that. And it's still, yeah, I'll go back and it's still there people can appreciate and usually it's women who are using these spaces we can appreciate that sort of thing um so bags for everything music bag a sports bag meetings you have meetings everything goes in there craft um choir productions uh cake decorating so get bags and put this stuff in it doesn't even have to be organized in the bag just you know okay i'm gonna cake decorate now so i can get the bag and pull it down and that kind of just, and if they're pretty bags, it's like nice if you can make them pretty bags. Um, let's see, let's see. I wanna see if we got everything. Um, stations, no, I don't think I talked about stations. Um, have everything that you need in one area. So if you have to buy more than one needle nose, then buy them. If you need to have more than one of anything, because you use it here and you use it there, scissors. Here, use it there, then use get that so that you have all the tools in the same place. And every place needs a trash can. Every place needs a trash can. And you can color code things. For instance, um, I have a, my craft room and my brand color's lime green. And the kids know all my tools are green. And if I see you with a green tool, scissors or any kind of tool, um, measuring tape, I know you're in my stuff and that goes back. So you can color code and say, this stays in this area, this stays in this area. Um, let's see. So desk bills have a station for that. Make sure trash can's there. So, you know, just go through what you do, what you need and make a station for that. Um, so, let's see, it's Visual Cutter. There's a book, Simplicity Parenting, I forget who writes it, but he talks about how much toys really give kids anxiety and to, an entitlement attitude, the abundance of toys. And he gives some experiences that he's had with working and purging and, and or, you know, having like a toy library where they put the toys away and they only come out periodically. And the difference that it's made in these families. And I thought it was really interesting. There's a lot I like in his book that I personally agree with. Um, but it's like taking away the visual cl clutter. Um, Anyways, you ought to look at that book and see if it might, there might be some things interesting to you there. Let's see on the list. Yeah, toys. I, I would purge my kids' toys. Toys, um, it's not a, it's, toys aren't a status symbol, which I think in the U.S. we have that idea. Toys, to me, are just tools. They're tools to help me to be able to help my kids do a certain thing or to keep busy. But you know what, if you took all the toys away from a kid, they're not gonna sit in a, in a chair and do nothing. <laughs> I mean, what kid's gonna sit there and do nothing if you take away his toys? He's gonna figure or she's gonna figure out how to play without the stuff. They're going to do it because that's their nature. Their nature is to be creative and to play and that is good for them. Playing. I, I won't go into that, but it's really good for them. Um, let's see. Last on my list, I think, um, are, oh, old school, old school cubbies. You know those little, like, mail slots where they used to put, um, like, like it's these, like eight by eight cubbies and it's like a, a half wall of them and they would slide the mail in them, old school. Um, I might have one on my on my Instagram feed, but um, we made one, Alan and I made one and, um, did, and put it on a table for my craft stuff. And I had all my craft stuff in bins in those like little white shoebox bins. And um, when I 
took them out of the bins and put them in those little cubbies, I could not believe what a space saver they were. Those cubbies, I mean, old school, they knew what they were doing with those cubbies. They held so many things. It's almost like the tackle box, just on a bigger size. They held so many things, and I was able to condense all these boxes into this one half wall area. Carrie says, um, we were talking the other day that it's hard for me to get rid of toys because of the investment in them. We have, and I can't see the rest, Carrie, I'm sorry. Um, but I think I get your point. You, we spend a lot of to we spend a lot of money on toys, and that's why I think I liked the library, the toy library. And I would do that to some extent with my kids. I would put them on the highest shelves where they couldn't get to them, and then they had to put everything away, and and um, we would switch them out. And because yeah, toys are expensive, and here in Sweden, I am not kidding. It's like double the price for any toy. Um, yeah, I've been shopping toys. So, yeah. So that might be, um, if that's what, I, if I'm correct in the rest of what you were saying, that might be something too where you, and plus you can gift to other people. Um, and there's plenty of people who don't, plenty of kids who go without that would never buy the expensive toys and, and we can give them in that direction too. So, um, yeah, I think have to read his book to find to really see where he's coming from with it because it's he's really convincing with what the stories and the his thought and I yeah I agree with it too but yeah it's it's a hard thing and that's why you have to look at and think toys of toys differently that they're tools they're not necessarily and they're they're really for us to give to our kids our kids really will play and use their imagination and be creative, which is way better for them when they don't have anything or very little. I mean, give a kid, we have at home um, in the States, we have, Alan made a trunk, you know, one of those little steamer, little small steamer trunks full of blocks. And Joseph today was telling me how he missed those. Uh, didn't cost us hardly anything because they were leftovers. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm hoping, obviously, this isn't like a, a organized tell-all sort of thing that you get all the ideas, but hopefully it's made you think and maybe made you um, decide that there are certain things you're going to do differently and because organizing, when we organize, have organized homes, we run smoother. It run smoother. You're not looking, f you know, sometimes when we've moved and then we've moved back or something or moved to another house, I spend so much time time looking for something and it makes me crazy because I know that's just wasted time. And you, I think you know what I'm talking about too when you, you, you have those moments. So the more, the more we can organize around our real lives so that they run smoothly or as smoothly as possible, then it's gonna free up other time. It's gonna at least free up headspace where you feel good about you, you know things that you can not fuss about certain things and your mind's a little more free. So that is the tip, um, making more time, getting organized. So you have a creative heartbeat. So listen for it and I will be back tomorrow and we'll talk more about how our creative lives can really move forward. So bye for now.